Hello, everyone, and welcome to AEW Dark Excalibur here with Taz. We are getting right into the action this past Saturday night on Dynamite. After Bobby Fish was victorious, he still was dishing out the punishment to Anthony Green, but who should come running down the ramp other than CM Punk? And we know Punk and Fish will meet tomorrow night on Dynamite, but right now, Bobby Fish in action here to kick us off. You know, Punk's always sticking his nose where it don't belong, Excalibur. That's one of my problems with this guy. I know Punk forever, and he's always been a Budinsky. Mind your business, this Punk. This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20-minute time limit, making his way into the ring from Albany, New York, weighing 207 pounds, the infamous Bobby Fish. Well, Bobby Fish and CM Punk will collide tomorrow night, 8, 7 central, as Dynamite returns to our home on Wednesday night on TNT. Can't wait for that. We'll talk a little bit more about that broadcast coming up. His opponent from Grand Iran, weighing 230 pounds, Invictus Cash. Well, Bobby Fish, I'm a big fan of this man personally and professionally. He's a quality individual. He's a quality man. The beatdown he put on Saturday night after Dynamite on Mr. Green was beautiful. Sometimes you send that message when you're new in a locker room, and that's what Bobby did. Bobby Fish lighting up Invictus Cash here with some strikes. That, that first knee Bobby Fish hit was right down the middle. And then the running knee strike in the corner. Bobby Fish teeing off on Cash here, Taz. Well, you know as well as me, Excalibur, Bobby Fish is a world-renowned striker. His Muay Thai background, no matter if his feet, his hands, his knees, every joint in his body, his elbows, he's nailed that, that dragon screw right there after some strikes. Tremendous. Bobby Fish picking apart Invictus Cash, and we saw Bobby Fish just a couple weeks ago go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the American Dragon Brian Danielson cover here. Just a two-count for Fish. And Bobby Fish really pushed Danielson to his limit no, in that matchup, No, it definitely test. did. I mean, uh, a, an amazing matchup, too. But right here, Cash caught the leg, though, of Fish. Hold on a sec. Oh, nice. Uh-oh, he missed it. A strong forearm shiver right there. Invictus Cash transitioned around, caught Bobby Fish with the, the elbow shot. But Bobby Fish elevates the knee strike right on the button of Invictus Cash. And there's those knee strikes, those Muay Thai knees. Watch out! And the exploder into the ropes. Taz, not even you were mean enough to do an exploder <laughs> into the ropes. That's true. I never did that. It wasn't a thing back then. But if I would have known, I would have done it. <laughs> Bobby Fish, the big knockout shot. And the victory here to kick off AEW Dark tonight. The infamous Bobby. Fish. Yeah, send the message right there directly to CM Punk tomorrow night on Dynamite. Watch out, Punk. Bobby Fish, CM Punk, all a part of AEW Dynamite tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. And here we see that final knockout shot by Bobby Fish in our very own Tony Schiavone standing by. All right, coming up tomorrow night from Boston, Live on TNT, Wednesday Night Dynamite. This man, Bobby Fish, so much success already here in AEW, but you have CM Punk one-on-one. -on -one. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Shivani, you said it. Coming up on Dynamite, I've got CM Punk, yeah. the best in the world. Yeah. Allegedly. So we're gonna find out on Dynamite just how good you really are, CM Punk. Because in about 24 hours, Tony, you know it, I know it. <laughs> Most importantly, he knows it. Okay. It's clobbering time. Right. It is coming up. Fans, tomorrow night, live on TNT, this man Bobby Fish against CM Punk, and more dark continues in just a moment.
Here we go, we got ladies action featuring the former AEW Women's World Champion, Riho, in action right now. This is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Shinagawa City, oh. Japan. Well, she, I guess she'd rather go down the steps. <laughs> I, I understand. It's a more safer way to go. Yeah. Yeah, she was, she was <laughs> contemplating a stage dive, but instead, Rio goes down the stairs as she makes her AEW Dark Universal debut here tonight. Her opponent from Sioux City, Iowa, X Tina K. Taz, it is great to have Riho back in action here in AEW. Obviously, with the uh, you know the pandemic, everything else, travel lockdowns, it was tough for Riho to travel back and forth between Japan and the U.S. But now she's back in action here in AEW. Absolutely, it's great that she's back here in AEW. Here, our audience right here in Orlando, Florida, they're going crazy chanting her name, <laughs> giving up some size to her opponent here. Though Rio is. Yeah, Xtina K with the wrist of Riho, but Riho using her speed and technique, turning things around on K. K goes into the ropes, vaults over, and once again wrenches the arm, the wrist of Riho. And now the pressure put down on the shoulder. Riho, though, sends K into the ropes, shoulder tackle, lateral press. And nice Riho wrenches out right there. Yeah, look at that, look at that drop kick. Awesome stuff right there. Rio, how quick Excalibur. She turned the tables on Kane so quick. She certainly did. And, you know, as we've mentioned so many times before, Riho used to battling larger opponents throughout her career. And she really knows how to chop somebody down to her size to make it, a, make it more manageable for her to overcome the competition. To your point, she's mastered that, Rio has. And the other thing I don't think that people talk enough about, oh, Rio, is the amount of pain, how tough she is, the amount of pain that she can sustain. And we're seeing Kay dish some out right now to Rio. Rio sent face first to that top turnbuckle pattern. Now, Xtina Kay, the unnecessary backflip out of the corner, but still hit the shoulder to oh, the midsection. My, you, you read my mind. I don't know why she did that, that backflip, but people do that sometimes. I, I don't know why. Ladder, oh, not even a one count, or barely a one count from Rio. You don't have to be a fancy Dan. You don't have to be fancy Dan, or in this case, fancy Danielle all the time. Again, Xtina K with the cover here. The leg was hooked, but just a two count. And Tez, I mean, that you have to remember, you're in the ring with a former champion. I mean, as much as you want to make an impression to the, the audience here in AEW, you have to keep in mind that this is somebody that's been to the top here in AEW. Absolutely, I completely agree with you, and that's you know, that's something you got to keep in mind. I mean, because no matter if you if you're a lot stronger or bigger or faster than your opponent, if that guy or girl, that man or woman, is a former world champion, top of the heap, again the backflip, and it still doesn't work. Yeah, Rio making Xtina K pay those elbow strikes. Rio just hammering K with those shots. Xtina K, the boot to the midsection stops Rio in her tracks. Rio sent into the ropes. Rio breaks through the clothesline, hits a drop kick. And Rio back in the driver's seat now. Yeah, and Kay can't, she can't even get to a vertical base. Meanwhile, Rio is going to that second rope for something. Rio coming off the second rope, the crossbody, and there's the strength of Xtina K coming into play here. Xtina Rio, K though, for sure, safe. big power. Uh oh, sorry, watch out. Riho escapes off the shoulders, hit the running knee strike in the corner. And now Riho headed up to the top rope. Xtina K eats the crossbody. Riho covers two. Go! Xtina K kicking out. Yeah, not enough right there to get a victory over the, 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 the sizable athlete in this situation compared to Riho. But Riho is so tough. She's so quick and, again, resilient. Maybe she's got a Northern Light suplex of mine, but Kay blocked it. Xtina K hammering down on the spine of Riho. Looking for a suplex. Wow, Riho snaps suplex counter. 
Well, Rio's hips are already underneath Kay's because she's shorter. So right there is a big advantage to apply a snap suplex. And Rio headed up to the top. You can hear the crowd here at AEW Universal in support of Rio missing the foot stomps. Kay, spine buster. We could be seeing an upset here, Taz. You might be right. Uh-oh. No, Kay mistimed it. Rio got the knees up on the standing moonsault press. And now Rio, beginning of the end. The Somato, the double knee strike, the one, the two, and the three. Rio gets the win. No winner of this match. Rio. Rio hitting that Somato, the, the double knee strike, and she generates so much power. Let's take another look at it, Taz. Yeah, and you see right there going through her opponent, not just hitting Kay, but going through her with a double knee strike. Excellent job by the former AEW Women World Champion, Riho. A great victory for Riho here tonight on AEW Dark. Central on TNT. We will hear from the TNT champion himself, the face of the network, the Spanish god, Sammy Guevara. Orlando, how we doing? Look, I'm excited for tonight's match, so I'm going to get straight to the point. Tomorrow night, live on Dynamite, Ethan Page versus Sammy Guevara for the TNT championship. Ethan Page, congratulations. You finally got the match, buddy. You politicked, you bitched, you complained, you whined, and you got the match. And I'll be honest, you do deserve it. You've been doing this longer than me. You've been wrestling a lot longer, but you, you've come from the same place as I have. You've grinded on the independence, and now you finally got the match. But what's gonna happen, Ethan, when on the biggest match of your life, and the biggest opportunity of your career, you fail, like you've done your entire life. Are you, gonna, are you gonna continue to bitch and complain? Because I'll tell you right now, all that bitching and complaining will not get you the TNT title. I busted my ass for 11 years, blood, sweat, tears, all that BS, and I became champion. So Ethan, Enough with all the bullshit. Tomorrow, I hope you're ready to kill 
because I'm ready to die. That's exactly what you're gonna have to do to take this title away from me! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Jeez. Are you kidding me? Who let this guy in here? You hope I'm ready to kill? Sammy, I've thrown a grown man down a flight of stairs. I've thrown a grown man over the rail and into the crowd. I've been ready to kill since the day I stepped foot in AEW. Sammy, 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 I know you're the face of TNT, but that's gonna change, dude. And I know these people love seeing you as the face of TNT, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You guys love Sammy Guevara, right? Of course. Sammy, you're relatable. These people relate to you. Look at you. You're an immature, basic-ass civilian like everyone in this building but me. And the only reason Ethan Page is not relatable... Buddy, look at me. I've got the best smile in professional wrestling. I got the tightest tits in the game. Look at this style, this grace, this presence. I own the room, and nobody here will ever amount to anything. So listen up, Sammy. This network's finally going to get a champion they deserve, a face they can plaster all over the globe. I'm going to take TNT to places it never even thought possible, especially with you as champion. So Wednesday night, Ethan Page becomes TNT champion. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure of it tonight. <laughs> Dude, my God, Ethan Page, Ethan Page, Ethan Page is beating the hell out of Sammy Guevara. Let me get some, let me get some size 12. Oh, I love it. He's bleeding. Make him bleed. Finish him off. Finish him off. Finish him off. Finish him off. I love it. I love the blood. He goes edge. He goes edge. Finish him. Finish him. The next champion. Oh, he's got nothing left. Well, look at this. Santana and Ortiz coming to the aid of their inner circle compatriot, Sammy Guevara. Guevara battered and bloody ahead of the huge TNT Championship match tomorrow night live on Dynamite. This rivalry between Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, and the inner circle is reaching a fevered pitch. And we won't have to wait long to see Ethan Page and Sammy Guevara go one on one. It will happen tomorrow night live as Dynamite returns to Wednesdays on TNT. Ahead of his semifinal round matchup in the World Championship Eliminator Tournament, Eddie Kingston goes one on one with the high flying Jack Evans next here on Dark. Looking forward to seeing Mr. Evans, Jack Evans, that is. Jack Evans from the heavens, homie. The new haircut, little buzz cut Jones. I want to see it. The handsome devil as it is. Let's see how the hell. This looks. particular bout is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. A uh -huh. ring from Parkland, Washington, weighing 189 oh. pounds, Jack Evans. Well, Taz, we are seeing the evidence of that haircut right before us. Jack Evans, at the behest of big money Matt Hardy, put his hair on the line against Orange Cassidy. But as you can see, Jack Evans did not come away with the victory or his hair that night. And his opponent from Yonkers, New York, Weighing 244 pounds, Eddie Kingston. Well, I think 
this is excellent. I mean, Eddie Kingston and Evans, they have the same haircut now. So I can basically say the guy with the, you know, shaved head is going to win. And I'll be right. <laughs> and it could be the referee. We, we don't know. <laughs> that referee, Bryce Grensberg, I wish you wouldn't have brought him up. I'm still pissed off at him what happened on, on Rampage. Shady, what he did to Will Hobbs. Taz Bryce was calling it right down the middle. I know you know a referee that does that too. But Bryce <laughs> is as honest as they come. And you see Eddie Kingston not pleased with the antics of Jack Evans running his mouth too much. And we know, as I mentioned, it will be Eddie Kingston and the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, this Friday night, a part of AEW Rampage on TNT 10-9 Central. The semi-final round matchup of the AEW World Championship Eliminator Tournament. A lot of people are really excited, as am I, to see Danielson and Kingston lock horns in such an important tournament. What a match that will be, for sure. Physical it's gonna be. And speaking of tournament matches, and speaking of Orange Cassidy, the winner of the final first round match tomorrow night on Dynamite will go on to face Orange Cassidy. That'll be a first round match between John Moxley and number 10 of the Dark Order, Preston Vance, live tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT is Jack Evans coming in the corner, the back elbow. His momentum carried him over the ropes. Kingston staggered out towards center. The springboard. Beautiful springboard by Jack Evans. He took Eddie Kingston off his feet, but Kingston barely a one count. Well, that's the thing with someone like Evans, man. You know, he is so athletic. His whole career he has. And Kingston leveled the playing field with that hard shot. Dropped, dropped Evans, but Evans popped right back up. And Taz, this past Saturday night, Saturday Night Dynamite, the first round match between Eddie Kingston and the Murderhawk monster, Lance Archer. We saw Eddie Kingston come away with the victory with the pro wrestling technique. He rolled up Lance Archer, but just how goddamn tough is Lance Archer? Oh, super tough. I tweeted about that. It was a scary moment in that match, and Lance landed hard, but shows the toughness of the Murderhawk monster. Look at this. Standing Sky Twister pressed by Evans. A two count. Jack Evans continuing to jaw with the crowd here at AEW Universal. It's not. Eddie it's not often. trying to clear the cobwebs. It's not often you get to you know beat up on a guy like Kingston when you keep him down. You know Eddie's so tough, but right now you got a veteran. Both guys are veterans, and a guy like Evans able to keep Kingston in harm's way not a problem here. Having a hard one. Uh oh. Uh oh. Kingston catching Evans as he came off the top and dumping Evans on the back of his head. Eddie Kingston, though, you can still see favoring that right shoulder. Well, it's a good moment here for Eddie, maybe to regroup, for Kingston to regroup, but both men are up. Oh, well, there's a nice job by Eddie Kingston. A second chop, and look at how Evans is just almost bent in half by those chops from Eddie Kingston. Well, recently, Kingston, Kingston rings recently, the arm. I'm sorry, recently, Kingston. Oh, oh what a DDT. That might be it. Hold on. The DDT, but Evans able to kick out. I was just saying, recently Kingston joined us here at the commentary desk. People thought him and I were arguing. We were just having a talk. That's how New Yorkers speak to each other. It really is. I mean, hello. Who the frick is the big deal? <laughs> Jack Evans flips out of the backdrop attempt from Eddie Kingston. Hits the leg layer. Kingston is staggered. Hey, Jack Evans. Jack Evans got a power. Michinoku driver. The cover. The leg is hooked. No. This Evans is motivated since getting his head shaved, being embarrassed on TV. He looks like he's friggin' 10 years younger, Jack Evans. I, I can't I can't disagree with that. It looks great. You should shave your head. Especially under because that. you should shave your head under the mask. Just shave it. Well, I mean, how do you know I don't have that much hair? I heard that you have long blonde hair, like real, like 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 old school Jeff Jarrett. Oh! oh! Kingston with the hurricane, and now the backdrop driver. He just planted Jack Evans, and now looking, he's got the stretch plum. The stretch plum is locked in, and Jack Evans taps out immediately. The winner of this match, Eddie Kingston.
as Eddie Kingston hit some combination offense to the neck of Jack Evans, but once he locked in that stretch plum, it was all over. Yeah, sure thing, good suplex too, and Eddie Kingston gets the victory, now building momentum as he goes into dealing with Brian Danielson, the American Dragon, which will not be easy. That will be this Friday night on Rampage, Kingston versus Danielson in the semifinal round. And speaking of tournaments, the TBS Championship Tournament continues tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. We will see a huge first round matchup, Serena Deeb versus Hikaru Shida in a rematch of their encounter just three weeks ago. Shida was looking for her 50th victory here in AEW, but Serena D upset the celebration. And as Serena D was gloating on it two weeks ago at Dynamite, Hikaru Shida did not take kindly to that. So this first round matchup, we know will be physical. We know it will be heated. And we know it will go down tomorrow night, live on TNT, AEW Dynamite, returning to Wednesday night, 8, 7 Central. Here we go, one-on-one -on -one action featuring Dante Martin with Leo Rush in his corner against JDX. This should be a pretty badass match. Let's go! This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Being accompanied by Leo Rush from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing 205 pounds, Dante Martin. Dante Martin with his newfound tag team partner, financial advisor, mentor, a little bit of everything in Leo Rush and Taz. Dante could do worse than having Leo Rush as a mentor. Uh, yeah, you know, I guess. <laughs> from Chicago, Illinois, weighing 215 pounds, J.D.X. Well, because see, here's the problem. Leo Rush went on social media after, uh, on Rampage, when Powerhouse Hobbs got ripped off, and he started trying to po uh, poach. He's trying to poach freaking Powerhouse Hobbs from Team Taz. Is Leo Rush out of his mind? I went back to him on social media, about went nuts on him. Well, Leo Rush is the master of the leverage buyout. Perhaps he saw an opportunity. Perhaps he saw a dip in the market. But right now, JDX and Dante Martin going one-on-one, -on -one, of course. Dante Martin and Leo Rush will make their tag team debut this Friday night on AEW Rampage when they take on Dante's former mentor, Matt Seidel, and his brother Mike as part of a huge tag team matchup this Friday, 10, 9 Central on TNT. Well, there's no doubt that Leo Rush is definitely getting things done. We saw him get a match with Seidel. There's Rush there with Seidel against Punk. Well, I mean, you know, he, he's got some clout. He's got some juice. I mean, so got to give him credit for that. And we know Dante Martin is just highly talented athlete. Amazing. Look at this. The athleticism in this young man is tremendous. Dante stepping off the bottom rope to break the hold of JDX, the bypass into the ropes. Dante goes for the trip. JDX elevates it. Speaking of elevate, there goes Dante Martin. What a drop kick, Taz. Just crazy height in everything he does, the drop kick, the leapfrog. It's just some, he'll do some basic stuff that looks like it's just insanely spectacular, spectacular because it's just so damn athletic and amazing. Uh, amazing, amazing uh, athlete for sure. JDX puts on the brakes, hits the Enzi Geary, catching Dante on the back of the head. Dante swinging a miss. JDX back heel trip, goes for the cover. Ooh, barely a one count. Dante Martin kicking out right in front of Leo Rush. And you see Leo Rush right there, is, you know, coaching him up, talking to him, talking to Dante, which is good. That's a good job by Rush. Taz, the interesting thing is we have not seen. Whoa, whoa, look at that, Dante. Going off the bottom rope once again and coming over the top with the Pescado. Driving JDX into the mat. And I was going to say, we have not seen Leo Rush in action here in AEW since he appeared as part of the Casino Battle Royale. Who knows what shape he's in. But, oh, Dante coming off the top. JDX running with the flatliner. The cover, no. Well, 
Excalibur, Dante Martin has been doing that double jump moonsault several, several times for quite some time here in AEW. So JDX had him scouted. Good job by the J and the D and the X. JDX charging into the corner. Dante once again avoids contact. Goes over the top, sends JDX behind him. There it is. And now Dante coming in. There's that double jump moonsault. The cover, the hooks are in deep in the win for Dante Martin. So let me tell you the deal, right? So when you go for a move and your opponent counters it and smart enough to outplay you, and then you have the confidence, as we go back to the replay here in a second to show you what happened, to have the confidence to go back to that double jump moonsault, it just shows how strong-minded, look at that, Dante Martin is to go right back to that Excalibur and get the victory. An incredible victory for Dante Martin. And let's hear from Tony Schiavone, Leo Rush, and Dante Martin. Okay, there is no question that Leo Rush has made things happen since his arrival here in AEW. Now, coming up this Friday on Rampage, tag team match that you have set up, you and one of the great young stars here, going up against the Seidel brothers. What a match that's gonna be. Yeah, Tony, what a match that is gonna be. Because my man Dante Martin is gonna prove to not only the Seidel brothers, but most importantly to himself, that he is one of the best wrestlers in the game today. And I think, uh, I think, it's almost about that time that the Seidel name needs to go away from this circle because Seidel hasn't done what I can do for Dante Martin's career. He hasn't done it, and he never will. This is what's good for Dante. This is what's good for up here. This is what's good for in here. And soon to be, this is what's going to be good for highest flight. Leo Rush, Dante Martin coming up Friday on ramp against the Sidels. Oh, wow. Elite general manager, huh? The greatest wrestler of all time, getting his hands on his own professional wrestling game where I create the cards. This is my universe. We have a challenger online. What would a layman know about professional wrestling, huh? There is clearly some bugs in the system or something. I'm not, I don't lose. I've got every belt in the universe. How am I losing in this game? Think you have what it takes? Prove it with AEW Elite General Manager. Draft your favorite AEW wrestlers and book your own shows from week to week. Download AEW Elite General Manager, available now on iOS and Android. Well, tomorrow night, Adam Cole, the Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega, the Super Elite, will team up to take on the Dark Order in a huge eight-person tag team match as Dynamite makes our return to our home on Wednesday nights, live at 8, 7 Central on TNT. And this past Saturday night, at the special Saturday Night Dynamite, we saw Jungle Boy put away Associate Stooge, Brandon Cutler, in short order, and then Adam Cole, as he had Jungle Boy's attention diverted, allowed the Young Bucks to hit the ring, the super kick part, the BTE trigger, and then Jungle Boy, after Adam Cole lowered the boom, Jungle Boy thrown off the stage, through the table at ringside. The elite, the super elite, the super click, whatever you want to call them wreaking havoc all over AEW since Adam Cole's arrival. And right now, let me throw it down. Let me throw it down to our colleague and Adam Cole's mortal enemy, the great Tony Schiavone. All right, regardless of personal feelings here, what you guys did to Luchasaurus a couple of weeks ago, and then to Jungle Boy throwing him off the stage. I would ask you to explain yourself, but I know better than that. 
It was a horrible act, and you're smirking. You seem like you enjoy things like this. First of all, I'm going to be the one who holds this microphone. When myself and the Young Bucks, when we threw Jungle Boy off that stage and we watched him crash to the ground, if you looked closely, you heard me say, wake up. And I wasn't just telling Jungle Boy to wake up because physically we knocked his ass out. <laughs> Metaphorically, I was telling him to wake up. Uh, guys like Jungle Boy, guys like Luchasaurus, guys like Christian Cage, they're in denial. They don't recognize how good, how powerful the elite really is. Because Tony, there's a reason this place is called All Elite Wrestling. Because guys like me, guys like the Young Bucks, guys like Kenny Omega, we're the building blocks of this place. The very state of pro wrestling is thanks to guys like us. And the fact that no one in that locker room recognizes that shows you how stupid they really are. And if you thought, if you thought what we did to Jungle Boy was bad, you included Tony Schiavone. You ain't seen nothing yet. It's complete and utter disrespect towards Tony Schiavone from Adam Cole, but Cole and the Super Click putting all of AEW's locker room on notice. But they will have to back it up live tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT on Dynamite. The TBS tournament is underway to crown a very first TBS champion in the women's division. You see standing before me one of the finest athletes in all of AEW, Jade Cargill, who, by the way, Mark Sterling, has a buy in round number one. Exactly. A lot of clueless people out there are wondering why Jade has a buy in the first round. Let me break it down for you. A little bracketology. Jade Cargill is in the middle of one of the most influential sports winning streaks of all time. She has beaten the likes of Nyla Rose, Thunder Rosa, Red Velvet, who else? Uh, nobody's. It doesn't even matter. Sky <laughs> Blue. <laughs> all these people. Blue Sky. <laughs> And this has earned her a spot in the top five rankings, of which she's just going to continue to climb. But we no longer have to wait for a title shot. Finally. Because there is a new championship, and it is perfect for the hashtag Jade brand. New title, new network, new champion, new face of professional wrestling. Just give me the belt. You all know what it is. I'm that bitch, and this is that bitch show. Perfect. Jade Cargill, one of the fine athletes in the bracket that has a first round bye. Coming up next year on AEW Dark, big time singles matchup. Tiger Huas takes on DJ Brown next. Tiger Huas, an athlete with a laundry list of credentials. We'll get more on that after the introduction. This is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, weighing 220 pounds, Tiger Huas. You can tell by his stance, Tiger Huas, well versed in the arts of capoeira. Indeed, he is as well as a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, back belt in Muay Thai, an amateur wrestler. Let's hear from He's Justin. From Memphis, Tennessee, weighing 175 pounds, and DJ Brown. Tiger Huas, a five time South American champion, freestyle wrestler in the 86 kilo division. And oh! oh. <laughs> Love this guy. That was nice. <laughs> Wow, just one swift kick. That's it, Tess. The winner of this match, Tiger Huas. That's how you do it. No reason to overstay your welcome. One and done, one shot done. Let's take a look here. An amazing kick. Tiger Huas using that capoeira kick. And now our Tony Schiavone is standing by with Tiger Huas. All right. How about that win for Tiger Ruas? Great Brazilian star here at AEW and I've got a feeling the wins are just getting started. Yes, you know, 
I'm not here with no reason. I have been seeking competition for my whole life. And with all respect, this gentleman didn't have technique enough to offer. No. So, I know that here we have the all elite wrestlers and the all elite fighters in the world. And that's why I'm here. And Mr. Tony, Mr. Tony, please give me more competition. Give me someone with more technique because you know, my technique is everything. Tiger Ruas with a win here on Dark. Here we go, we got ladies action featuring the ever tough, the ever dangerous, the Diamante. She collides with Skyla Moore right now. This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making her way to the ring from the 305. Dia Monte! Just up the road from the 305, Miami, Florida, here at AEW Universal. Dia Monte set to go one on one with Skylar Moore. Dia Monte, we've seen. In the past, just a bad attitude all the time. Kind of like you, Taz. Her yeah. from Dormont, Pennsylvania, Skylar Moore. And before this match gets too far underway, I want to remind everybody that AEW is back on the road. And on December 1st, we will be in Duluth, Georgia, making our return to the Atlanta area. And then one week later, we will be at the UBS Arena. Long Island, New York, and then after that, December 15th, one, Skyler Moore trying to get a victory here. Yeah. We will be returning to the Dallas area in Garland, Texas. Tickets for all events information right now available, AEWTIX.com. And see Diamante turn the tables right here on Skyler Moore, but Skyler Moore, Skyler's bringing the fight right here, Diamante, so this has uh, turned out to be just a strike fest. In the early, early goings, don't watch out. Yeah, hammer throw to the corner. Oh, Skyler Moore changes directions. The roll up, Skyler Moore looking to come away with a victory there. But Diamante, that running uppercut. Yeah, definitely hit its mark. And that left handed short clothesline. I think there's another one coming. Short sure thing. Skyler Moore having trouble getting out of the blocks. Diamante, the standing slice bread, launches over Skyler Moore. And now. Look at this, the, the nerve hold digging in on Skylar Moore. Gets an overhook and a body scissors. The body scissors apply. The overhook, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Skylar Moore taps out. Diamante gets the victory. Winner of this match. Diamante. Yeah, definitely set the tone right there. Diamante, good job for sure. Skylar Moore put up a little fight early on, but not enough for Diamante. All right, now. Our colleague Tony Schiavone is standing by with the premier athlete, Tony Neese. We are with the premier athlete, Tony Neese. Recently on Dynamite, we saw Tony Neese in the stands watching the actions. You're here now. What are your intentions in AEW? Well, I heard that AEW is the hottest professional wrestling company right now. So what perfect place for the premier athlete, the hottest free agent in professional wrestling. What a perfect place for me to sign to. But there, there's just one thing that I, 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 can't, I can't get out of my head, and that's, and that's this, this stacked AEW roster, and half of them don't even belong in the same ring as the premier athlete. So I'm not even going to waste any time. Next week on AEW Dark, I'm going to start picking off names one by one, and I'm starting with Fuego Del Sol. Del Sol, I'm going to prove to you and everybody out there that you don't belong in the same ring as the premier athlete. Well, there you hear it. The debut next week of the premier athlete, Tony Nice against Fuego Del Sol, right here on Dark. Coming up tomorrow night on Dynamite, the final first round match, the AEW World Championship Eliminator match. But before that, we will see 10 of the Dark Order in action next. 
join the Dark Order. Number 10, Preston Vance tomorrow night will face former AEW World Champion John Moxley in the final first round matchup. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by negative one and members of Dark Order from the Keep, weighing 240 pounds, Dark Order number 10. That first round matchup will be a part of AEW Dynamite returning to Wednesday night. It will be the final first round match of the AEW World Championship Eliminator Tournament. And the winner of number 10 versus John Moxley will go on to face Orange Cassidy in the semifinal round. As we see negative one in the corner of 10, an imposing duo. His opponent from Albany, New York, weighing 190 pounds, Shane Stetson. Well, I'll tell you, that matchup we're about to see soon here, as you mentioned about Moxley in the Eliminator Tournament for the, for the AEW World Title Opportunity. Moxley, a former AEW World Heavyweight Champion, against 10. It is going to be a head knocker for sure. You got to be ready for, for a guy like Mox, I mean, for sure. Well, if you remember, Taz, it was when John Moxley was AEW World Champion as 10 just running over Shane Stetson here. Stetson gets set into the corner. When Mr. Brody Lee was challenging John Moxley for the AEW World Championship, Moxley had a match with 10 leading up to that, that title match, and Moxley actually injured 10, tore the bicep. Right. When he, uh, he pilmanized the bicep so of number 10. And I, I, you know Preston Vance hasn't forgotten that. Yeah, no, no, definitely 10. Vance right here, Preston Vance, redemption in his mind for sure. He's going for his full Nelson already. The full Nelson and Shane Stetson forced to submit. Wow. Well, if that happens to Mox. Ho, oh, ho, that's going to be a problem to get out of that full Nelson from the ever powerful Preston Vance, number 10. As you see, negative one on top of the shoulders. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's going to be that easy for 10 to get that full Nelson locked in tomorrow night on Dynamite. But if he does, it could be all over for Moxley. And let's take a look at the World Championship Eliminator brackets. We know that number 10 and Moxley will wrestle tomorrow night to decide who will face Orange Cassidy. And then this Friday night on Rampage, Brian Danielson versus Eddie Kingston in the semifinal round. Can't wait. All right, here we go, Excalibur, tag team action. We got two fans, two fragos, two fragos. We're gonna delve into this right now. Jazz, <laughs> 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 I love that you were perplexed by the matchup, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tag team contest set for one fall. What the hell is going on? Making their way to the ring for the first time. Fuego one, Fuego two. Too fast, two. Fuego! Now, Ted. Wow, what an introduction. Ring gear, what the hell is going on here? For a debuting tag team, this is, uh, this is one hell of a ring entrance. Um, so, you're not kidding. I, I wanna I wanna ask you this. I, I, I had a chance to speak to Fuego this past Saturday night when uh, Dynamite was in Orlando, Florida. And our ring announcer Justin Roberts about to do the uh, the honorifics for the uh, the other competitors in the match already in the ring. And there are always the team of Kid Bandit and Dean Alexander. And I asked Fuego, I said, it appears that your partner has a tattoo on his chest that says the word dream on it. And it, it's, it right. appears very similar right. to the same tattoo that Cody Rhodes has on his chest. And Fuego said, well, the, that's a good, yeah. Fuego said, well, all you can see over the singlet straps is the letters D and M. So it might actually say doom. It could say doom. Maybe he's a big fan of doom or maybe he's a big fan of Cody Rhodes. So you're saying, I mean, that, and that could be the case. You're saying that Fuego number two, this man so similarly built to the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, is such a fan right. of Cody Rhodes that he got the exact same tattoo. Well, I'm just glad he didn't get that same tattoo that Cody has on his neck, because that would have been a bad move. <laughs> <laughs>
Dean Alexander. Pop the boys on that one. <laughs> Dean Alexander and Fuego Dos starting things off for their respective teams. And actually, Taz, now that you mention it. How do you know that, that's Dos? How do you know that's Dos, not one? Uh, because he has the singlet on. Uh, Fuego won okay. here with the cover. I mean, now that you mention the neck tattoo, I Taz, don't like Fuego it one. does not appear that, yeah. that Dos has a neck tattoo, or now even, from looking at it, even a chest tattoo. I think it, it disappeared. He's got like an invisible ink. Well, Kid Dynamite just got arm dragged, that's not even his name, by Fuego One. <laughs> it's Kid Bandit. Yes. Kid Bandit gets that's taken nice. down. And while I have this chance, while Fuego Dos going to work on Kid Bandit, want to remind everybody that AEW will be making our Minneapolis debut first on Friday, November 12th for AEW Rampage. And oh, Fuego Dos, what are you doing, brother? Fuego AEW Rampage Dose. live Friday, uh, November 12th, and then live for full gear on pay-per-view Saturday, November 13th. Tickets for both events on sale right now, AEWTIX.com. A little teamwork here by too fast, too fuego, too slow, too quick, too much. Fuego Uno goes for the pinning predicament, but Kid Bandit able to kick out, or Kid Dynamite as he's known in some I circles. I've been trying to say this the whole damn match. Please lay out and let me say it, Excalibur. I don't like Fuego do Sol, and just by the, the, the brothership they have, I don't like Fu Fuego too either, Fuego Dos. Well, Kid Bandit held open for Fuego del Sol, and Fuego Dos. Kid Bandit's got some badass gear on it. He's got like Pat Tanaka gear. <laughs> I popped it. Fuego Dos puts on the brakes, ducks the shot from Dean Alexander. Dean, though, oh, sweeps up the legs of Fuego Dos. And now Kid Bandit. Good job by Dean Alexander. Kid Bandit. Oh, big corkscrew kick in the corner. Fuego Dos may be in trouble here. Yeah, Fuego Dos, that means two, is definitely in grave danger. I mean, you know, I can see that the physical, the physique, I should say, he's bigger than most luchadors, meaning Fuego Dos. And he, um, but he definitely has that lucha style. Is he from Mobile, Alabama, like Fuego? Is he from, like, the Atlanta area? Where's he from? Uh, Marietta, I believe, Tess. <laughs> That's the Atlanta area. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Right, well, Dean Alexander's not impressed either with Fuego Dos. No, he's not. He, uh, Dean Alexander delivers the sled sledge be uh, across the shoulder blades of Fuego Dos, and now the chin lock, but Fuego Dos breaks the grip, throws the clothesline. Dean Alexander coming off with the drop kick, takes down Fuego Dos, the lateral press. No, Fuego kicks out. Oh, excuse me, Fuego Dos. I, I don't know, it's Fuego. This Fuego Dos kind of sucks. He's getting his ass kicked a lot. Yeah, I mean, he's no Fuego del Sol. That's very clear. No, no. And Kid Bandit. Kid Bandit. Oh! oh. oh. What a counter by Fuego Dos and Fuego del Sol itching for the tag on the outside. Fuego Dos makes the roll, makes the tag. And a flying cross chop. A second one. Dean Alexander struggling to get up to his feet. Running uppercut in the corner. Fuego del Sol, the spear. Place is going crazy for Fuego right here in Orlando. AEW Universal apparently is Fuego country as Fuego comes off the middle rope. The kick to the side of the head. Fuego covers two. No, Kid Bandit there to break it up. Good job by Kid Bandit. Wasn't Kid not Fuego Dos out? Wasn't Kid Dynamite Mike Tyson's nickname? I think it okay. was, yes. I'm just, um, just making sure. <laughs> Waist lock here by Dean. Well, uh -oh. Alexander Fuego tries to break free. Dean Alexander, what a tombstone! Oh! Look at Fuego Dos. He's finally bringing some offense, this guy. And look at this Fuego Dos over the top. Kid Bandit. Tope Suicida! Dean Alexander, wow. though, right before this flurry, he just spiked Fuego del Sol with that tombstone pile driver. I don't even know how Fuego's moving after that. That was really impressive by Alexander. Uh-oh. 
Dean Alexander throws the line, the miss, and Fuego! Oh my god, he absolutely stuck him with the Tornado DDT! The cover, the two and the three! Well, maybe Fuego Dosh. Fuego one, Fuego two. Too fast, too Fuego! Justin Roberts with the longest exit intros in the history of pro wrestling, but I digress. Unbelievable. Just keep a camera on for the whole while. And look at the, the partner show. Are they related? Are they brothers, Fuego one and two? I think uh, Fuego two's brother is a little taller and older, but he paints his face. Uh, <laughs> Taz, I will say this about Fuego Dos. He has the piercing blue eyes, those of a, of a, a reality television show star. He does, yeah. I, yeah, that's a good point. Look at this. It's main event time here on AEW Dark. The American Dragon, Brian Danielson, goes one-on-one -on -one with Aaron Solo of The Factory. Aaron Solo, Nick Camarado, and of course, QT Marshall, the factor. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by the factory from South San Francisco, California, weighing 196 pounds, Aaron Solo. Aaron Solo, as we talked about so many times before here, a very experienced veteran, a very crafty veteran, Somebody that is dangerous, but he's gonna have his work cut out for him in our main event here tonight, Taz. Absolutely. You see Camarado on the outside put QT Marshall, not respecting anyone. I like that about these men. But Solo's gonna have to deal with Danielson, who's just been red hot here in AEW. Brian Danielson undefeated in singles competition, though he does have that one draw against the AEW World Champion, Kenny Omega. And his opponent from Aberdeen, Washington, weighing 197 pounds, the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. Taz, it seems like we have an abnormal amount of people perplexed by the steps here on AEW Dark here at Universal tonight. Yeah, I was out here earlier, and I walked the steps, the stage. I did a backflip off the stage, uh, like, uh, oh, look at a black guy, by the way. GT, huh? See that shot, that shiner he's got there? Yeah, that was courtesy of uh, Preston Vance, number 10, yeah. last night on AEW Dark Elevation. That's what happened. But as you were saying, you did a backflip. Yeah, yeah, you didn't see me. There's no rehearsals, because you don't make the rehearsals. But I did a backflip off of the, um, off the stage like Jack Evans. And so, yeah, the, the stage area is a little weird here. But right now, the match's not weird, and Solo and Danielson gonna have at it. The main event here tonight on Dark. American Dragon Brian Danielson and Aaron Solo going one-on-one. -on -one. And then what about Rampage? This Friday night, Taz, American Dragon Brian Danielson, Eddie Kingston meeting in the semifinal round of the AEW World Championship Eliminator Tournament. Friday night, 10 p.m., 9 central on TNT AEW Rampage. I'm really looking forward to that, sitting there calling it with you, man, calling it match with Kingston. And this cat right here, Danielson's gonna be awesome. Look at his joint manipulation here by Danielson on the left arm of Solo. Wrist control, complete leverage all over that wrist and arm. Good job so far by Brian Danielson. And of course, the AEW World Championship Eliminator Tournament. The finals culminate live on pay-per-view Saturday, November 13th at full gear. We will see the conclusion of that tournament and we will also see the main event at full gear, Kenny Omega defending the AEW World Championship against Hangman Adam Page. Whoever walks out of full gear as AEW World Champion will know who their next challenger will be. Yeah, great point, Excalibur, and that, that's the deal right there. QT Marshall right now, not impressed at all. He isn't with Brian Danson. I am. And Solo, smart, taking his time on the outside. Very smart. Solo looking for the uh, Greco-Roman knuckle lock. He and Danielson tied up center of the ring. Danielson comes in, looks to wrench the wrist of Solo. 
Solo trying to pop. A lot of people don't realize why, do, why they don't realize why guys do a Greco Roman knuckle lock, but it's to get, you know, if you have a good grip, you can feel the guy's grip, and you have control over the wrist and hands in wrestling. I mean, you're in control. You know, that's a, a very important part of grappling. And look at this Danielson taking control, punishing the wrists of Solo. Goes back over into a pinning predicament. Shoot count, Solo kicking out, but Danielson keeping the pressure on. Solo forced to bridge up on the top of head. Can he carry the weight of Brian Danielson? He drops down. Two. No. Oh, oh Danielson yeah. right there. Right into the cross arm break. Yeah, right to that cross arm break of that Juji Katami. It's done perfectly. But back to those bridges, back to those covers, I should say, forcing. Uh oh, he's trying to extend that arm of Solo. Forcing Solo to kick out. That You make Solo exert a ton of energy. Cover here. You make Solo exert a ton of energy when you bridge on a guy like that. It's tough to kick out a lot. Danielson transitioning over across the body of Solo and now with the wrist pinned to the mat. Look at this, putting pressure on the shoulder and bringing the wrist up towards Solo's head. And now Danielson, the vicious stomp right on the tricep. Yeah, vicious is the key word, Excalibur. That's an amazing way to hyperextend your opponent's elbow or shoulder. Danielson, a knife edge chop to the chest, uppercut on Eric Solo. Solo turns Danielson around, hits a chop of his own, a second one, a third one. But Danielson, this is not a man you want to exchange strikes with, Taz. No, no, I completely agree, but hey, Solo, there's no back down in Solo. He's battle tested. Oh, he ran into that boot really hard there. Danielson got the boot up, but Solo swept up the leg, the back of Brian Danielson's head, striking that top turnbuckle. You can see Danielson trying to work through the cobwebs, and now the shotgun drop kick, sending Danielson spilling into the corner. QT oh, Marshall. Coaching him up. Yeah, this is what you want right now. There we go, cover, cover. This is what you want if you're solo, man. You got, now you got Danielson down. Now, don't waste time at the ref. Ah, smart by QT Marshall, very smart. QT Marshall, while Aaron Solo had referee Bryce Remsburg attention diverted. QT Marshall taking advantage of the opportunity. And what? You know, what a, what a black eye, so to speak, for Brian Danielson. Were he to lose here tonight? Oh, Solo covers oh, ahead dude. of that uh, that semifinal round dude. matchup with Eddie Kingston. It would be a massive this upset. Friday night on Rampage, Dad. It would be a massive upset, for sure. As I mentioned, Brian Danielson undefeated in singles competition, though, with that one draw against AEW World Champion Kenny Omega, which we saw as a part of EEW Dynamite Grand Slam in the Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens. The house that I built, Arthur Ashe, I built that house. The house that Taz built, that's the new name of it. You and Arthur Ashe. Oh, look at Solo, He's going for the drop kick, but Danielson countered, and now the catapult, nope. Solo counters the counter, what a great move. The inside leg are hooked, no. Yeah, I think you're right, it was a great move, I do think that you know, Danielson thought maybe he was going to shift the tide a little bit, but uh-uh, not a sense of urgency. He's amped up even more for Aaron Solo. Taz, I mean, I know I know you're biased. I know Team Taz, the, uh, the, the apple of your eye, but really, I mean, how many competitors in the entire world could wrestle Kenny Omega, the AEW World? Oh, QT Marshall again, the right hand from the outside. <laughs> the handsome devil. I was going to ask, how, how many wrestlers in the entire world could take Kenny Omega to a time limit draw. Oh, geez, I, I, good luck. I mean, you can, you can count them on one hand. You count them maybe on three fingers. I mean, that's how good Omega is. And QT's like, I didn't do anything. But to that point, the Kenny Omega dancing match in Queens that, that we had was absolutely amazing. I, I sat in the locker room with Team Taz. We're like, man, this is amazing. Brian Danielson showing his speed. Hitting that elbow strike across the jaw of Aaron Solo, taking him off his feet. Danielson trying to will himself back into this match. Oh, you, you saw that look on Danielson's face. He's feeling it here in AEW Universal. The running shot in the corner. And now the kicks lighten up Aaron Solo. 
You yeah, know, those high round kicks with the chops. And a second running kick in the corner from Danielson. Aaron Solo up to the top rope. The American Dragon Brian Danielson maybe thinking work on Rana. Whoa. He hits the top of work on Rana, brings Aaron Solo crashing down the center of the ring. And our live audience here in Orlando, Florida is loving it. AEW Universal is the place to be here in Central Florida as the American Dragon teeing off on Aaron Solo. Man, those kicks are so vicious, Taz, so brutal. They just knock the hell out of you. Cave in your sternum. And the round kick to the back of the head. Look at this QT Marshall up on the apron. QT Marshall. Oh, oh wait a second, no, look at this, Camarado. A little bit of a distraction right there. Oh! The factory. Oh, they have stolen this match. No, they haven't. The Factory came a heartbeat away from stealing this match from Brian Danielson, Taz. No doubt about it. That's why QT Marshall's pissed off. He knew the opportunity was right there. Was right there. They had a game plan, but it backfired. Danielson was able to kick out. Brian Danielson, after eating that corkscrew kick from Aaron Solo, very slow to get to his feet. Solo looking to press the advantage. He has Danielson isolated in the corner. And you see Danielson sinking down in that corner. He's in rough shape, Taz. Yeah, he's worn out a bit right now, Danielson. Solos, uh-oh, watch out. Good job by Danielson, though. The moonsault. Oh, tope suicide on Camarado. Dropped him. Eric Solo comes in. The shot is blocked from Solo. Danielson lands an elbow strike. And now Brian Danielson up to the top. No, Solo, what a counter. What a drop kick counter by Aaron Solo. Solo bringing this A game. Go for the win, Aaron. Go for it, buddy. Aaron Solo looking for that double underhook face buster. Nope. Danielson goes through. He's got the Omoplata. Now the LaBelle lock. The LaBelle lock is locked in, and Aaron Solo forced to tap out. Here is your winner. Taz, we saw Brian Danielson win via submission here in our main event earlier tonight. We saw Eddie Kingston win via that stretch club. I cannot wait for Rampage this Friday night when we will see Danielson and Kingston collide in the semifinal round. That's right, either Kingston or that man right there, the American Dragon, Brian Danielson will advance. Which one will it be? Well, you gotta check out Rampage to find out, but make sure you check out Dynamite tomorrow night first. Dynamite tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central. We are returning to Wednesdays live on TNT. Then, of course, AEW Rampage this Friday night, 10, 9 Central. And speaking of Dynamite, what an absolutely loaded show we have for you tomorrow night. A huge eight-man tag team match. The Dark Order take on the Super Elite eight-man tag team action tomorrow night. Plus, the TNT Championship will be on the line, and the stakes will be even higher when Sammy Guevara defends against all-ego Ethan Page. And the TBS Championship Tournament continues. The big-time rematch, Serena Deeb and Hikaru Shida square off live in the first round. Plus, in the last first round match of the World Championship Eliminator Tournament, number 10 of the Dark Order takes on the Blue-Eyed Battler, John Moxley. And CM Punk makes his in-ring debut on AEW Dynamite live tomorrow night when he takes on the infamous Bobby Fish. And then Friday night on Rampage, Matt and Mike Seidel take on the debuting tag team of Leo Rush and Dante Martin. Plus, as we mentioned, the American Dragon, Brian Danielson and Eddie Kingston face off in the semifinal round for a spot in the finals on Saturday, November 13th at Full Gear. AEW is back tomorrow on TNT. CM Punk makes his Dynamite Wrestling debut against Bobby Fish. Ethan Page challenges TNT champion Semi Guevara. 
and who will advance as the TBS and World Championship tournaments continue. I'm going to win this whole damn thing. AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on TNT.